Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is installing one of my favorite Linux distributions, and that is OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Now, there are two primary reasons I'm doing this. The first one is Tumbleweed now officially updates to GNOME 40, so it's gonna be the very first time I get to test that out at an official capacity. And number two, tomorrow I'm gonna to be uploading a video going over some of the things I recommend you do after you first install OpenSUSE. Look forward to that video, it's gonna be coming out tomorrow. If you're watching this video later on, I will have it pinned down in the comments. So if you would like to, you could follow along with this installation and then go directly to that video with my tips on what to do after it is installed. With that said, let's go ahead and get going on this installation. So before we do get into the installation, I do want to give you a little tip if you're in VirtualBox installing anything really. Uh, a lot of people think VirtualBox is laggy, slow, but really the default settings are pretty low. You only are giving yourself one CPU core. And in order to actually change that, and what I usually do when I install virtual machines, is I first go over to system. Right here you can change the base memory, but I usually go with eight gigabytes of RAM. Here, depending on your CPU, you can actually give it a few cores. So you could either go with a dual core four threads, or I usually give it six just to make it pretty smooth. And then from here, you could go ahead and enable some extended features if you'd like to. I also go down to display, pump that up and enable 3D acceleration. So just a little tip real quick. All right, so we are in, and because I have not yet been able to install VirtualBox drivers, the resolution is not gonna be perfect, but it will actually make it so we can see everything a little bit better. So what we're gonna do, you have the option to skip this and boot from the hard disk, but we're gonna want to go over to installation and hit enter. From here, it's gonna load up everything it needs, including the Linux kernel, as you saw on the little uh, dialog box there. All right, now we are detecting our system hardware. So the first thing it's gonna do is enable the network configuration. Uh, I do recommend you have an internet connection while you do this, because then you're gonna have more options throughout the actual installation. And you're gonna see a couple screens flash like that. Basically, it did a uh, update of the actual installer and updated the system repositories. And this is the first screen here that we're actually gonna be able to interact with. Now, this is your language, keyboard, and license agreement. Here is the license agreement for OpenSUSE. It's fairly standard for open source software. Now, OpenSUSE does come from a fairly large company, so they do need to do one of these. Here, you could change your language, keyboard layout, and do a test right there but we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And then it's going to probe the system. And here, this is why I said you should probably have a network connection. This is gonna enable online repositories. This will allow you to get updated software, packages, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate this now. And then it's gonna check the configuration. Here, you're gonna to want to just go with the main repositories as selected. And if you do want more information on these specific repositories, you could go down here and it gives you the descriptions, the summaries, and specifically where they're from. So we're gonna go ahead and click on next. And then it's gonna go ahead and add those main repositories to our installation. So now we are initializing the installation and then we're gonna be able to select our system role. This is your desktop environment. Now, I'm gonna select GNOME for this video, but honestly, if you're gonna install OpenSUSE, I would highly recommend you go with KDE Plasma. Out of all the distributions, whether if it's Arch, something like Kubuntu, anything, generally KDE Plasma actually gives you one of the best experiences on OpenSUSE. And this is generally what most people, including myself, go with, but I do want to go ahead and get GNOME 40 on this uh, Tumbleweed install. So we're gonna go ahead and select GNOME, and then next. You also do have XFCE, and then you could go with some other generic options here, but we're gonna go ahead and install GNOME. Next is gonna be partitioning. Now, if you only have one drive in your system, it's gonna be pretty easy. You could just go with the defaults, hit next. It's gonna wipe the drive and do what it needs to do. But if you do want to go ahead and go through this yourself, you could go through the guided setup, and here it will give you some additional options. You can enable LVM through here, disk encryption. I don't want any of that right now, so I'm gonna hit next. Here, you could go ahead and select your file system type. Now, BetterFS is actually the default for this. You could change it to ext4 if you would like to, but keeping BetterFS and enabling snapshots is a good idea as it is actually optimized for this. And then right here, you can have a separate swap partition. Uh, for this case, I'm gonna actually go ahead and disable that, but that is at your preference. If you don't have that much RAM in your system, I do recommend doing that. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit next, and you can see it changed this from what the defaults were. Now, if you do want to, you could go back, reset this to the defaults, and just go with the defaults. 
but I do like what I went ahead and did here. So let's go ahead and go next. And then from here, it's actually gonna start up the installation process. Now I will note OpenSUSE is a very big Linux distribution. I believe the disk image that you download is over four gigabytes. It includes a whole lot of stuff. But even with that said, it is one of the better performers. I actually did benchmarking on this previously. I think using KDE Plasma desktop environments with a couple different distributions and it performed very good in a number of different tests. But with that said, let's go ahead and select our region. Now I am in the Pacific region, so Los Angeles, actually more up here where it's much prettier. So we're gonna go ahead and go next. And here we're gonna go ahead and create our account. So you put in your full name, your username, password, all that fun stuff. So there we go, I put in my stuff. Now you can use this password for the system administrator, which I do recommend you do, and you can do automatic login, which I do not recommend you do. You could also completely skip user creation altogether if you plan on just using your computer as root, which I do not recommend. So we'll go next. And it says my password's too simple, but this is a VM, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue with that. And here it's gonna give you your overall installation settings. So up here you have your software, your booting settings, and you could do a run through and make sure everything is how you want it to be. So for software, you can see it's OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. I selected the GNOME stuff, including Wayland and X11. And then if I go down here, I have some system security and network stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit install. And this is your very last opportunity to go ahead and then abort your installation. But I'm gonna go ahead continue on with the installation and then it is actually going to go ahead and start up the installation process. One thing you're going to notice is compared to a lot of other dis, uh, Linux distributions, this installation process takes a significant amount of time. Generally like a, a Manjaro install for me takes uh, three to five minutes on this machine, but this is probably going to take somewhere around 10 to 20 minutes. So I will be back. All right, so it has installed and we're booting in. Let's go ahead and uh, fix up our resolution real quick here. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. So we are now in OpenSUSE running GNOME 40. So you can see that if I go up here to activities, we have the good old bottom dock here. We have our workspaces. And if we go ahead and open up our applications, we can see our workspaces up here with the dock and everything that is on our system. So just to really make sure, let's go ahead and jump into our settings. So we'll go over to settings and then go down to about. And then we can see we are running OpenSUSE Tumbleweed with the GNOME version of 40. And we are running Wayland out of the gate. So that is super cool. I really do like GNOME 40. I'm, I'm probably not going to use it ever as a my primary desktop environment. But compared to previous versions of GNOME, not counting GNOME 2, it is looking pretty good. I don't really like this background, so let's go change background and see what they give us. So not too many options here, as we can see, but obviously you go ahead and pull your own background off of the internet somewhere. Uh, one of the real big reasons why I like OpenSUSE is their package management system and particularly Yast. So the Yast application has a bunch of tools such as their actual repository manager and software manager. I believe this one's how you go ahead and pull software. I'm gonna go type in my password. Uh, yep, software management. So this is their software management tool. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it definitely does the job. Uh, example, file, Zilla, enter. We have file Zilla to install it. We just go ahead and select it, accept, continue and it goes ahead and downloads and installs that package. Now there are a bunch of things that you're going to want to do after your installation to get it up to speed and make it very user friendly. And that is what I'm gonna be talking about in the next video. So like I said, if you're watching this after I already uploaded that one, it will be pinned in the comments down below. Otherwise I will be uploading that fairly soon. So do be looking forward to that. Now before we exit out, one thing I really like is a lot of these applications have gotten some really good updates. Uh, Maps is a really good example. So let's go ahead and check out my good old, good old hometown of Yakult, Washington. It's not where I currently live, but it is my hometown. If you go ahead and search for things, they now have these really nice little uh, pins here in which you can see more information about the location that you are looking at. So it, this is uh, pulled from Wikipedia. So that's really cool. My grandma used to live 
Right, right over here somewhere, if I do so recall. Do they have, okay, cool. I'm just playing around at this point. Um, there it is. So you can see it's a very thick forest around here. Very beautiful area. Especially one of the most prettiest, one of the most prettiest places in the world, in my opinion, is just north of Yakul over here. You can see it's all dammed up up here. But if you go, there's a little one lane bridge over here. There's a magnificent rope swing under it. There it is, right here. Giving you guys a little spoilers if you ever visit the Pacific Northwest. This area all along the uh, Mount St. Helens region is absolutely beautiful. So not to get too up topic, that's, that's about the video. Uh, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss uh, the video going more in depth into Open Souza, as well as any other future uploads like this video if you did. Please do leave a comment down below letting me know just about anything especially when it comes to open Sousa and if you have any tips for anybody else who is getting started with the open Sousa ecosystem. Uh, with that said, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.